Hey guys, Kyle here with Tech Buddy and welcome to 2025. This is a base model M4 Mac mini with the 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of SSD storage. Now in these Mac minis, the SSD card is actually removable, but unfortunately there's no third party options available yet. And it's a proprietary Apple connector. So you're pretty much out of luck if you wanna upgrade the storage later by yourself at this point. I'm sure there'll be other solutions available later on, but for now, what what I'm actually going to do is take this little SSD card out that you can see here and those little silver sort of rectangles that you see are actually your storage and on this card there are two of them so in this uh, base model it's the 256 gigs of storage so two 128 gig NAND chips but we're going to swap these out for some two one terabyte chips so the first thing I'm doing here is just heating up the chip a little bit and removing this underfill. Now underfill is like an adhesive or a glue that they sort of put around the outside perimeter of these chips and also pump underneath the chips once they've been soldered to the board. And they do this to sort of secure the IC in place and prevent uh, you know, it becoming desoldered or any of the solder balls cracking due to thermal expansion or vibrations. Now your Mac Mini is probably not going to vibrate that much so I'm guessing they have put underfill here uh, more so for thermal expansion but either way we need to remove it from the outside of the chip and we can heat the chip up enough so that the solder balls underneath become molten and then simply flip it up off the PCB as you saw just now. And then I'm just going to remove the residual underfill from the underside here to clean up the area in preparation for the new NAND to go down. Now I'm just going to add a bit of flux and clean up the residual underfill and also clean up the old solder from the pads so that the entire area is ready to adopt the new NAND IC. So just using a wick and again flux and then cleaning everything up with some IPA, we have a nice clean finish result with no ripped pads. So with that side done, we're gonna flip the SSD card over and perform the exact same thing on the other side for the other NAND. So again, removing that underfill, cleaning up the underfill from the area and the old solder and wiping it all down with some IPA. And while I was working on the other side, one of the capacitors on this side actually came off the board. Normally the surface tension does hold these on, but for whatever reason, this guy just wanted to fall off. So I just had to pop him back in place. So with the area all prepped, we can go ahead and remove the new NANDs from the packaging. These ones did come pre-balled from the supplier. So all these tiny little balls are new and they are already applied to the bottom of the chip so it's ready to install so we'll add a thin layer of flux to the pcb and we've got to get all those little balls aligned perfectly with the pads on the pcb now apple doesn't actually put alignment markers on the pcb like a lot of manufacturers do so you'll basically have to go from your experience uh, and just sort of know what you're doing here if you wanted to, you probably could scratch a little, you know, couple of markers onto the PCB before you remove the NAND. So that way you have reference when you go to reinstall the new ones. But I was pretty confident with the alignment here. So I'm just heating up the chip and giving it a little bit of a nudge with the tweezers. And you can see if you look closely, it sort of jiggles. And that means that everything is nice and molten and aligned underneath the chip. So once that is all in place and I'm happy with the result, I'll repeat the process for the other side and let everything cool down before sort of cleaning it all up with some isopropyl alcohol. You want to make sure that when you do the cleaning with the isopropyl alcohol that you don't do it while the board is really hot. Otherwise, you might thermally shock the chips and, you know, you don't want to damage hundreds of dollars worth of NAND storage. So just uh, take your time, let it cool down and then clean everything up. I'm just doing a final inspection here to make sure that everything is sitting flat. There's not one side that's higher than the other or something like that. There's no balls that have squeezed out. And once I'm happy with that result there, 
again just doing the cleaning with some isopropyl alcohol once the board has cooled down and then it's ready to reinstall into the Mac Mini. So here I am just putting the SSD back in and I'm not putting every single screw back in just yet because I still have to DFU restore this Mac Mini and make sure everything works properly. And to do that you will need another Apple Silicon based Mac. So here I have my brother's M3 MacBook Pro. Shout out to my brother for helping me with this process because I didn't actually have another Apple Silicon based Mac myself that I could restore this Mac Mini with. So after a long period of time and we had to update Mac OS and do a few other things the restore finally did complete successfully the first time and it booted up to the Sequoia setup screen there so once I got it back home I proceeded to just reinstall the remaining screws and connect everything up properly and you can see that we have the two terabytes of storage thanks for checking out this video I'll catch you guys in the next one peace